Hey, what's up guys, it's Fish here and welcome back to another glorious custom map battle. Today we are playing on the Ruined Keep map and the scenario behind this battle is that the Beastmen laid siege to this once great fortress. However, the Beastmen managed to overwhelm the defenders and completely destroy everything that was within these walls. Colfran soon dispatched a force to go ahead and try and find any survivors. However, when he arrived to the keep, he found nothing but dead and burning bodies. He soon realized that this was a trap set about by Kazrak One-Eye to go ahead and destroy him once and for all. So in our scenario, we have Colfran moving into the city itself he is ready to defend it with a pretty decent force he has around about 3,000 troops and the enemy Brayherd has around about 3,000 troops as well however these 3,000 beastmen are higher quality than the forces Colfrans can bring to the battlefield we gave the attackers the beastmen around about six or seven thousand gold more than the defenders in Colfrans so because of that the beastmen have a lot more money at their disposal meaning they can go ahead and bring higher quality troops to the battlefield and hopefully this will be a really good battle it was really fun to play i played this battle on stream against one of you guys so if you guys want to go ahead and join these battles where i do get these replays make sure to go down and follow me on twitch tv so what we'll do is we'll run through the map we'll run through the army comps and then we'll get straight into the battle if you want to skip straight to the battle there will be a skip to battle button in the description down below just open up the description and find it and it will just say skip to battle and all you need to do is click that and that should take you straight to when the battle does start so we'll start off by looking at the map itself. We can go ahead and see that, uh, well, basically uh, in the map, this isn't, isn't actually how the map is set up. The map is set up that these forces spawn on either side of the keep itself. So it's kind of like a fight over the keep and both people have to rush towards it. We have one spawning point right here, which is where I spawned. However, to kind of make the battle feel a bit more cinematic, I marched my forces up before the Bray Herd decided to start charging. And obviously you can see where the Beastmen start. The Beastmen spawn down here. And I guess for the actual overall map it's whoever can rush towards the castle first and have a fight over that however for the replay we decided to go ahead and let Colfran's garrison the fort to make it a bit more entertaining the fort itself has been absolutely annihilated there are several breach points i think there's i believe there's around about nine breach points in total giving the enemies uh easy access to the fort to actually you know go ahead and use it against the enemies and i like the way that the modder has used this he's kind of gone ahead and destroyed the gates adding in loads of rubble everywhere i also like the way he has destroyed some of these gates i think it's this gate right here maybe uh oh no maybe it's not maybe it's just these siege points i like how he's made them a lot bigger so that more units can actually make their way through again if we look at I love how the modder has created just loads of burning buildings. It makes it feel like, you know, this fort was under siege and has just been burnt to the ground, leaving plenty of bodies, you know, piles of dead bodies just burning in their wake. I also love this really good, like, uh, beastman, I guess, lantern. Uh, totem thing right here it looks really really cool as well as that if you look on top of the keep itself there's just a pile of dead bodies on fire just burning in the moonlight it looks so goddamn glorious and uh, this is just great i also love how there's like burning coming out of the buildings itself and destroyed empire fortresses i also like how there's like a mini village out here as well with some farm and stuff this is something which i love to see in, in maps where they just add more life and more vibrant stuff to the map to make it feel like that this was actually an empire you know colony and these farms out here you know were used to supply the people who were currently garrisoning the fort you know because most of the time you know a lot of these forts and stuff don't have any like fields or farms or anything like that around them and it just makes no sense because how would how would the people survive obviously you know sometimes you know it doesn't really add much to the actual gameplay but for the feel of it i really really like it so i like these fields and stuff as well as that, if you're playing the map properly and not like how I am, there is a huge field uh, or a set of uh, woodland over to the right-hand side, which you can use to your advantage. So that is pretty much the map. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If you did, I'm sure we will see it on the battlefield when we do jump in. So if we look at the units themselves, we can go, oh, I didn't actually notice that. The woodland's on fire as well. Yeah, the beastmen have just absolutely ravaged this, this territory right now. They have just destroyed it. Looks glorious. I really like this as well. It just, again, just looks really, really cool. So let's start with the army comms. So there's, some, there's a few rules behind this battle. Because I only had, I think I gave the enemy 6 or 7k more gold than me. As well as that, I took a large portion of my cavalry force, which you can see out here. And I left them outside of the battle. These horses cannot join the battle until, I think, 5 or 6 minutes have passed 
during the battle itself. So Cole Franz is going to have to try and defend off until this cavalry can turn up and reinforce his forces. So that's going to be very, very difficult because we're already 6,000 gold behind and there's at least another 6,000 gold worth of units right here. Uh, so we're going to have to kind of you know, be 12,000 gold down for a little while whilst our forces in the actual keep itself try and hold off. We make our way over, we can see the units actually within the keep. We can see that we have some halberdiers. I believe I brought around about four units of these halberdiers. They're going to make up my main defense, my main anti-monster killing units right here. Hopefully they'll be able to do a good job at it. Behind them, uh, behind quite a few of these posts, I have sets of handgunners. I have like two on this flank and I have two in the central flank where we are mainly under attack. As well as that, I have a mortar, which again will just be racking up so many kills on the loosely form uh, formed up beastmen. We don't really have much structure. It's just going to allow the, the actual mortar itself just to rack, uh, wreak havoc on the enemy units. As well as that, making up our main kind of strength of our force, we have around about six or seven uh, of these great swords. Again, these guys are here to go ahead and put the hurt on the beastmen. They should be a match for any beastman melee unit, and hopefully they will be. I also have some swordsmen. These guys are going to kind of act up as my meat shield to take the enemy charges, but I'm sure they will serve me extremely well. And these guys are situated along all of the breach points to go ahead and, as I said, absorb the majority of the enemy charges. As we go back, we have some more great swords. I also brought a hell. Uh, what, where is it? Right here. Yeah, I also decided to build a, a bring a hell blaster volley gun just because I haven't really brought any of these this gun like before like for so goddamn long. So I thought I'd bring it, see if I can test it out. Unfortunately, I didn't really find a good position for it, so it might not do that much. As well as that, we have Cole Franz who is currently just looking glorious right there. Yeah, he looks sick as he's you know just getting ready to avenge the enemy forces using Deathclaw to scout out the enemy. Uh, so he's ready. It went if we look at the Beastman army, which is extremely scary, they have so many goddamn good troops, it's going to be very hard to deal with them. On this far left flank, flat left flank we have some Chaos Warhounds with the Poison ability. As well as that, we make our way down. The majority of the enemy line is going to be made up of these Ongor herds. You know, extremely, uh, extremely potent forces. They're obviously not like best of gores for most elite units. However, these guys are definitely going to do do work if they come up against some enemy uh, some enemy infantry, especially my swordsmen. We also have some Ungor herd or some Gore herds. Sorry, these guys are without shields, so again, they're really strong. And then we can also see some best of gores, these heavily armored beastmen who are just ferocious warriors, and I would definitely not want to get into a fight with one of them. As well as that, we have some Razor Gore Chariots. Again, these abominations just look disgusting, and I love the artwork on them. They look absolutely great. We have two Saigors, as well as that, we have some Ongor Herds, along with a Chaos Giant, or a Beastman Giant, I should say. I really like how they diversified all of these giants as well. They look great. We'll continue our way down. We have some more gore herds with shields, along with two two gore balls, one down here and one up there. Again, having this many gore balls is extremely scary because you guys know how potent this unit is. It can be extremely strong. We have Kazrak One Eye. He's actually on foot, so that's kind of good for me. I can kind of hopefully use my uh, harassment tactics to go ahead and destroy him. We also have another giant, along with some ungor spear herds and two units of minotaurs. One with great weapons, one with shields. There's also three units of harpies over there, but overall and an extremely strong force and I'm not sure if the Empire forces are going to be enough to withstand the assault because if you guys think about it I'm already 6,000 gold down and as well as that half my army or a decent portion of my army has to wait six minutes to come over so that does mean that these Minotaurs are going to be able just to you know cause havoc within my lines ripping them apart and again I have to kind of protect all these choke points as well luckily I do have the choke points on my side so that's definitely going to be helping me out the mortars are shooting as well as the hell rocket of a record. What even are these called? I always confuse these. The hell blast of Oligon. The hell blast of Oligon. So it's going to be trying to shoot. It's going to struggle a little bit. But I mean, my God, you can just see the enemy approaching down there. That does look scary as hell. And I mean, true to the beastman nature, they are just going to charge forward. There's no real strategy involved with the beastman. They are just going to be charging forward in full force. And I mean, they look scary as hell, especially with the Minotaurs as well. The Minotaurs are going to be brutal. Luckily, my mortar's firing some huge hits on the Ongor hordes. But I mean, they are just running forward. I love their like mohawks down to their they're almost down to their backs it looks so great these guys are going to reform and find a better place to assault they were originally going to go through this gap however they decided to move over we're going to be getting a devour right here i imagine 
coming down on this line as oh no we get a vortex spell that is brutal but what we want to be seeing is we want to be seeing this gore herd just ripping through the lines and he's going to be supported by his minor tor brethren as they follow up and charge him themselves i mean these empire swordsmen never stood a goddamn chance i feel so sorry for them they're going to be getting absolutely wrecked but i mean hold the line as best as you can cole franz is watching and he has dispatched some great swords to come and aid you in your fight as the great swords push up to try and deal some some amount of damage to these minotaurs and gore balls obviously they're not going to be the best optimal force to fight these it'd be much better if we had some units of say halberdiers here however needs must and these swordsmen must fight hard to hold this if we look over on the left hand side we can see that the harpies have finally made their move and they've jumped onto my hell blaster uh, cannons which are going to be stopping me from getting any shots off on these giants which is not good for me whatsoever luckily the luckily the great swords are fighting against the the gore herds which are going to be not really not really a match for them however cole france has gone in to rally the soldiers to try and deal some damage to the giant however the giant is not giving up easily the mortar shells are still coming out trying to help out the cole france is going to be taking a ton of damage but i kind of feel like he needs to be here to go ahead and just rally the situation and keep the hope within his men Luckily, the Halberds are fighting against the Gorbal, which is great. They're going to be doing plenty of damage to him as he obviously is a creature. So that's going to be great. However, he is also going to be doing plenty of damage to my own forces. The Harpies have kind of struck their damage. They've hit the Mortars back here, which again are going to be doing plenty against them. They've also tried to hit my Gunners, but I think I do have some great swords here to deal with them. The enemy are continuing to push on pretty brutally. And if we go on slow-mo, just to kind of watch a few more of the, the few more of the, the actions going on. Because, you know, there is a fight going down all this wall, which we do not want to miss. We can see the Minotaurs have managed to get onto these gunners and kind of silence them. This is great. You know, silencing these gunners is going to mean that they just don't take as much damage as they would. If the gunners get a couple of volleys off on the Minotaurs, you know, they're going to be dropping pretty quickly. So the fact that these Minotaurs have managed to kind of clamor onto them and stick onto them with the support of the Gore Herds as well is just great news. However, I do have some more soldiers. Oh, the Cygors throwing in their huge boulders. Luckily, I think both of them are going to miss. Yeah, well, at least one's going to miss. I think one's going to get a direct hit. Yeah, one's going to get a direct hit. Oh my god, just, just integrating my soldiers. So many halves of bodies going flying. That was brutal. Uh, I am going to go ahead and try and commit as many men as I have remaining to this fight. I see that the Beastman player is just charging pretty much everything through these couple of alleyways. So I need to support more men. We have Halberds here supported by the Great Swords. The Great Swords, as I mentioned, we're doing great against the Beastman infantry. It's just the, the mighty Minotaurs who are going to be fighting their way forward, which are really going to be my major issue. As well as that, if we look over to this right-hand side, we can see that the Bestigors are pouring through against Empire Swordsmen, and the Bestigors are just so large compared to the rest of the Gore Herds with their spikes on their helmets. You can see that they are just ripping through the Empire Swords, and they don't really stand a chance. As I said, these are kind of just soldiers here to try and slow up the enemy advance. I don't really need, don't really, I, well, I can't really expect these guys to do much more, but they're going to be trying to slow them up and just taking out as many as possible. And again, I think it looks really, really good with the smoke coming out the back Background as the Empire Swordsmen just jumping in, trying to slice off the enemy soldiers left, right, and center. Same over here as well, the Razor Gore Chariots with the Chaos Warhounds. I'm kind of expecting to win this engagement, if I'm honest, against the Razor Gore Chariots. I don't really expect too much. As well as that, we also have a lot of reinforcements around the back of the fort itself, which aren't really being challenged too much. So we can kind of almost just bring them troops back round and not really worry about being you know outflanked or anything like that. Cole France has had his fill of battle and he's going to be falling, uh, running away from the battle itself to go ahead and get a better aerial view of the battlefield which obviously does make a lot of sense so he can go ahead and command some more soldiers but I mean I love these goddamn custom maps I mean just look at what's going on on the screen right now we've got burning territory everywhere Cole France is overseeing the battlefield with harpies flying in my empire swords getting demolished by a beastman giant we continue to go down the battle line as this beastman just destroys my great swords I really do need more halberds here hopefully the halberds are here themselves and I believe my cavalry can turn up pretty pretty soon how far into the battle are we right now 
with 14 minutes in, so I believe my cavalry only needs to wait another couple more minutes until it can join the battle, and I desperately need it. If we look at the balance of power, you can see it has gone ahead and shifted out of my favor. We have similar troop numbers, but you've got to remember that the enemy have a lot of men in these Minotaurs and two giants, as well as that, there's a lot of Bestigals, which have lower unit counts. So even though the enemy and me have the same, roughly the same amount of men, it's definitely not looking too great for me. More of my halberds are chasing after these Minotaurs, and Cole Franz has gone in himself as well to try his best to try and take these guys down. I think some more spells popping off here. What have we got here? Can't actually see what it is. Oh, but it was uh, it was up there for a second, but it has now gone. It definitely wasn't my spell, so it was a beastman spell. Uh, but it looks like the Chaos Warhounds have ripped apart my main defense here. I do have some gunners set up pretty nicely. who are going to be getting good, good shots off on the enemy Warhounds. However, these guys are soon to have to change their focus as the, the city itself is under heavy assault right now. Cole Franz is trying to slow up as many of these Minotaurs as possible. You can see the giant even in the background as well. And these Chaos Warhounds are going to be turning, trying to take out Cole Franz. If the enemy can slice Cole Franz to pieces, then victory will definitely be in, the, in their favor. The same with me. If I can take out Kazrak, who is somewhere in the battlefield right now, I think rallying his soldiers, that could also be great news for me. This giant has pushed forward and he's just demolishing these gunners. Uh, the gunners really need to fall back and try and get into a better firing position. Uh, as they're the moment, they're not going to be surviving too much. Luckily, we are getting some mortar shots off though, which is pretty good as more of the Gorhas come flying through. I can't believe the enemy still have plenty more soldiers to send and commit to this engagement. It's crazy just how many forces the Beastmen have and how good they actually are. Kazrak himself is in the battle right now, just causing as much of a nuisance as he can against my great swords and actually ca causing quite a lot of morale damage as we have a gore ball come flying in as well as the side gores coming here to support i think that is actually going to route a large portion of my force as you can see and the balance of power once again trickles away from my favor cole francis had to go in to try and fight this beastman giant he knows that we need to try and take care of these creatures if we have any chance of winning so death claw at the moment is fighting hard some of the mortars are still shooting which is great news uh, as that's going to be finding the big targets of the enemy lines because there is just so many beastmen right here and again what a perfect hit that mortar shot was that was glorious right there however the sons of sigma are trying to hold their lines but the minotaurs are just horrific they are giving us no quarter whatsoever and they are just looking for blood they all they see is bloodlust and they are definitely getting their field today in this battle Carl franz himself again is having to fall out of battle as the beastmen just overwhelm our defenses you can see our great swords falling back you can see these cygors just tearing apart our infantry as we get a huge rock coming flying in right there cole franz is surrounded right now which again is not good news however the cavalry has arrived let's go ahead and click on slow-mo and see our cavalry arriving to the battlefield so again the balance of power is so hugely in my out of my favor i'm not sure this cavalry will be enough to help us but we do have a nice little advancement here of these demigriff with halberd so i need to get these guys engaged with the enemy giants and with the enemy mining tours just all monster type units as well as that i do have a ton of these reichsguard and one unit of empire knights which i'm going to be trying to use just to hit the enemy infantry Again, Cole Franz is pretty low, so I can't really risk him going down. But you can just see the large amount of enemy forces left. If we look at the balance of power, we can see that I only have 1,300 men left, and the enemy have a good 1,900, along with all the Minotaurs, along with the Gorbals, along with the Cygors, and the rest of the Minotaurs who are fighting hard. So it's going to be a very difficult battle for, indeed for me. As you can pretty much see, all my infantry are, are pretty much routing from a battle. We have a unit of gunners here. We have the Sons of Sigmar fighting to the to rend and a few gunners split out everywhere else we also have a unit of great swords over here by the cygors but again this is not the type of unit that the great swords want to be fighting because the cygors will just rip them apart as they have no real good anti-large whatsoever jesus that guy needs to shave <laughs> and as we go back to the main engagement we can see that kazrak is in here himself causing huge morale damage to the main line which is just not good we need kazrak dead if we can kill kazrak then maybe we stand a chance but I don't really know who is going to do that. Cole Franz is extremely low, as you can see. And if Cole Franz is to charge into battle, then that might be extremely risky for him. Because if Cole Franz goes down, the, the will of the Empire is lost. 
The Empire Knights are finding their target in some of these Ongor herds, which is great news. However, not all of these Empire Knights are going to be pouring into these gaps. Some are going to be pushing around. The, uh, the Demigriffs are going to be pushing around to try and find some more entrances to the enemy lines. But as we can see, the enemy hordes are just pouring out, rallying, using our own choke points against us. And a lot of these Knights are getting stuck on the wall, which is not good. So my units need to be thinned out. Some more of them are pushing forward, trying to make their way to the king. But they are definitely finding harsh resistance right now as the Minotaurs are just brutally ripping them apart. Especially the great weapon ones are perfect for the amount of armor piercing they have. Kazrak is also still alive and there's only going to be so much the Empire forces can give. You can see the Bantam Power is even looking even more against our favor. We have a few brave great swords fighting to the end along with the Sigma Sons as more of the cavalry comes pouring around the flanks. The Sigmar Sons, along with these great swords, will not give up on their king. Or their emperor, I should say. And hopefully, he can do his best to try and whittle him down. Cole Franz, again, is just observing the battlefield, looking what needs to be done. I did manage to go ahead and get these Demigriffs onto the Cygors, trying to wipe these guys out, because they do actually have quite a bit of ammunition left. As you can see, a huge rock throw right there smashing into my units but i'm trying to whistle these guys down or at least route them before the end would be great i also have great swords fighting that one which is pretty nice but hopefully these demigriffs can take out the cygors i still have an enemy giant to kill i think the enemy, yeah, the enemy does still have a few units in reserve he's holding back and he doesn't really feel like he needs to use them again you can clearly see by the balance of power is definitely not in my favor so he's going to go ahead and hold back that giant just to kind of commit it when he needs to which is smart for sure as well as that he also has some ongor archers as well which is going to be bringing up momentarily to try and start taking out cole franz but the enemy forces are just tearing apart my main line. Some of my Reichsguard have turned back. We also have some infantry here as well surrounding this unit of, uh, of Ungor herds right here along with the cavalry forces. But it's going to be hard. We have Bestigors in this engagement as well. And we are fighting a load of Bestigors in this siege point which is just not good one bit at all. Unfortunately, I have actually just I have actually missed out quite a bit of the uh, quite a bit of the magic. Oh, here we go! A beautiful scythe here. This is exactly what I'm talking about. As the scythe just comes in, ripping through my great sword line or my sword infantry line here. Thankfully, though, we have managed to take down one giant, and the other side gore is extremely wounded. So I'm going to be pushing on my demigriffs on to trying to kill the other side gore. I then quickly bring them back. Cole Franz himself has now gone into combat against Kazrak. And I believe he is about to slay him in battle. Unfortunately, we missed the health being dropped. But uh, Cole Franz took down Kazrak from pretty much full health or from half health. And in like two hits. It was absolutely insane. The Minotaurs are going to be enraged right now. And turn around and just try and go crazy to fight over Kazrak's body. They saw him going down and they are mad now. So it's going to be up to the Great Swords and the Sigma Sons. What remains of them to fight hard. As well as that, the Reichsguard have finally made their way into the city. So killing, killing Kazrak is going to give us a chance, that is for sure. We still have a pretty mighty cavalry force left remaining. And that killing Kazrak is going to prompt the remainder of the enemy forces to start moving into battle. These Ongor Raiders, Raiders and this giant, a full strength giant, is going to start making its way to the engagement. Which is just so scary to think that, you know, my forces are pretty much completely spent. You can still see the balance of power is so against me. Until the, you know, there's still a full strength giant making their way into the engagement. The main cluster is going to go ahead and begin here. The cavalry is going to be pouring in against the enemy forces. You can see Cole Franz up there overlooking the battlefield once again. The best of gores, the razor gore chariots are going to be in uh, just a brutal melee. And I mean, I would definitely be happy if I was a, if I was a beastman player right now. These minotaurs are just so goddamn strong with their huge axes and their ferocious fighting abilities. As well as that, some more harpies are being pushed in. Luckily, I do still have some demigriffs left. And they're going to be surrounding this gorbal, which again is just such a perfect engagement for them. So I'm hoping they're going to be using their, their halberds effectively. Cole Franz himself is going to come in and just try and smash this gorbal as well. Try and take it down. It's extremely low, I believe, and it did just die. Cole Franz almost sacrificing his life to go ahead and deal with that. My cavalry is going to go ahead and be freed up now so we can push on the rest of the enemy forces. You can see once again Cole Franz going in even though he is so low and even though the battlefield, you know, the battle could be lost if he dies. He is still going in heroically to take care of the enemy forces. 
The archers have now turned up, which is extremely scary. If these guys can get a couple of volleys on Cole Franz, that is not going to be good for me whatsoever. My Empire Knights, though, are trying to get around the side so they can go ahead and shoot. I mean, just look at that archer fire right now. I need to get some cavalry engaged on these guys ASAP, and that's exactly what I am going to do. I don't really know what this... I never noticed that before. What the hell is this man doing right here? Let's speed up the camera so I can see this. Who the hell is this? Is this like... <laughs> Who the hell is this? The Silver Surfer has arrived. So my cavalry is going to be forming up and turning around and trying to hit this, these Ungor Raiders as best as I can. A load of the best of are going to be falling. I'm also going to be bringing around some great swords as well to help out. The great swords are going to be dealing with some Ongor herds right here of shields. So the battle is still extremely close. If I can't kill this giant, it will just rip me apart. Thankfully, though, the Bantz power has kind of shifted back into e being even. Cole Franz himself is chasing down some of the enemy forces. And my saving grace right now is I have a unit of these demigriffs still remaining. The fact that I have them demigriffs still remaining is just amazing. And I really, really am thankful that I do have them. Luckily, my knights did manage to do a decent amount of damage here. However, they are going to be getting pushed back any second now. Luckily, though, for me, the demigriffs have now, have now charged in. The Sigma Suns are still fighting. But getting engaged into this giant is just going to be great. We need to kill this giant. If we don't kill this giant, I don't think a large portion of the enemy forces will be routing. Which is obviously just not what we need. My cavalry is going to be getting beaten back, which is not good news whatsoever. Because it means these Ungor Ranger, Ranger, Raiders can now just turn their focus to killing Cole Franz. If they can shoot Cole Franz from the sky, then my battle hopes are definitely, definitely over. There's a few more wizards as well still remaining, as the voiceover did say. I believe we're currently chasing him down as the Bray Shaman is fighting hard against the Great, great Swords. He is also up against some Bestigore herds as well if they decide to get engaged in the battle. But we do have some cavalry forming up here for a brutal charge against the Ongor Raiders. The, uh, the Reichsguard pushing in. And I mean, that was a beautiful, beautiful charge. I believe I'm also going to be pushing some cavalry out to go ahead and hit them from the other side and try and break them. Because the Reichsguard are pretty good in, in on the charge. But once they get kind of stuck up into heavy combat, they're not going to be doing that great. Much like any cavalry would. So the, the Ungols are going to be trying to make their way into the city as fast as they can. They want to be trying to shoot down Cole Franz, but my Reichsguard are going to be stopping them. And this unit of Reichsguard is going to be turning around. I'm excited to see them charge in and just send all these Ungols flying. Lances down, boys. Let's give them hell. Oh, my Lord. The charges. The charges in, M in Warhammer Total War are just amazing. And that's going to be surrounding three units of Ungor herds. There is no escape for them at all. They are completely surrounded. And this is going to be great news for me. The Giant is still fighting hard. And I believe that my Demigriffs have actually been routed from the battlefield. Which is not good. I need these guys to be standing strong. Luckily, I believe they did come back and they're going to be charging straight back on. But I mean, the battle is just raging on. There's still two minutes left of the battle itself. The giant is extremely low. And if we can kill the giant, that would be great. But again, my demigriffs are being routed from the battlefield, which is just not good. I need every bit of, a, uh, bit of bonus I can get. And right now, this is just not looking good. Luckily, killing these Ungor herds is going to be good. It's going to free up a large portion of my forces. But this battle is still so close. We have some best of Gauls fighting up against my great swords. This battle, again, is just so important. Both sides have almost exhausted all their forces. And there are only the few left who will survive this battle. To tell, the, tell the tale, the tale of Cole Franz's bravery in this battle. As he wields Galmaraz one last time. Down, descending into the Bestagore forces. And supporting his great swords and pushing back the Bestagore herds. The giant is still, uh, is still pushing and causing me a huge amount of nuisance. And the rest of the Beastman forces are forming up for one last assault. It's going to be up to Cole Franz and what remains of his forces to try and take out this giant. Balance of power does look pretty good for me. But all we have to do now is reform our forces, stop anyone from coming back from the battlefield and try and strike down this giant. Once the, be once the beastmen see the giant being slain from the battlefield, they will know that no hope remains. These great souls are going to try and do their emperor proud and they're going to be charging in against the Ongor herds. They're going to give their last for their emperor. And I mean, what more can Cole Franz ask from his soldiers? The giant is also forming up. The Ungor spears are pushing up as well. And the soldiers are going to flee for their lives as the giant just rips through their main lines. Cole Franz. The soldiers look to Cole Franz. 
as the Beastmen just continue to push on. Cole Franz is looking for a good opportunity to come in. He's waiting for more soldiers to form up. I believe he's waiting for his Reichsguard to go ahead and give him one last assault. His great swords are pushing in as well, along with what remains of his Reichsguard. He's going to be forming up as these great swords try their best to hold the giant in place. They are more of a distraction force as Cole Franz comes pouring down to kill this giant, doing a horrific amount of damage. And there we go, the giant has been slain on the battlefield, and that is going to be it. A Pyrrhic victory for Cole Franz and his mighty force. That was a great battle, and thankfully it didn't desync as well, which was just great. I'm really happy it didn't desync, as I did. I wanted it to play out like it did in the actual battle. So let's go ahead and just take a second to look at the dead of this battlefield. Before we go and see what the kills are, you can just see the amount of, you know, this This finally does look like that, the you know, this, this ruined keep has been besieged and just, there's been so much dead. It'd be so cool if the, if the castle itself looked like this when we turned up and we added the bodies to it. That'd be so good damn cool if there was just all these dead still i don't know remaining on the floor when when cole franz does turn up i doubt that's something you can actually do in the in the game itself but it'd be so cool if it was the case uh if you you, you had two armies fighting here first and then cole franz turned up with another army that'd be that'd be really really cool and just having all these dead just burning on the ground but overall, that was an amazing battle. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you enjoyed it down below in the comments. You know, if you want to see more battles like this, then do obviously make sure to like and comment. If we look at the kills, we can see that we have the Reichsguard racking up 251 kills. Even the Empire Knights doing pretty good. The major MVP, though, was the Mortar. That did so much damage, and some of my great swords did pretty good. Let me know what you guys also thought of me having the reinforcements turning up, the cavalry forces. If you guys like that, then obviously make sure to comment. If you guys didn't like that, make sure to comment. And obviously, please feel free to give me ideas on what maps and what uh, factions you want to see coming up next. I'm always happy to read you know, your, your guys' ideas for scenarios and stuff. It's always really, really cool to see what you guys actually want to see. So yeah, make sure to drop a like and a comment. I'll see you guys next time and fish out.